So now you know about my parents, let me tell you about me. Um, I grew up painting nonstop. I had my little station set up next to my mother and I was constantly painting and drawing. But I was always very drawn to makeup and the power of makeup. I was, I had this, I remember I had this, it was like a, I would, I want to say like a mix between a violet and a blue eyeliner that I would always put on my eyes. My mom was actually doing this art show. It was this outdoor art show. And I remember I kept sitting in the car and I kept putting this eyeliner on night and I, cause I just loved the way it made my eyes sparkle. And I sat in my dad's truck behind my mom's racks. This was before my mom became mass. Uh, mass mass produced and I was just putting this eyeliner on over and over and over again I was compulsive with my makeup and I would do these new makeup looks and I'd put on all these weird clothes and walk down the street and I just always felt this passion about makeup so you know I, I was doing the painting and drawing but I was also constantly sitting people down and wanting to do a little something to their face and in high school I'd always sit my friends down and I'd always had this passion for makeup and I remember always walking past makeup counters as a kid and thinking Oh my God, I mean, that just seems like my dream job, you know? So I was always doing these, you know, makeovers. And in college, I started working at the Mac counter. And that's really where I, I felt my niche. But at the same time, I was in college for English writing. So, you know, I'm developing my skills in writing and in speaking and, you know, just reading and understanding my place in this world. I dabbled a little bit in philosophy, but... um the only thing that that made me realize was um, I really am an artist because there's just so much crazy stuff. I'm not even going to get into that. Anyway, back to the makeup. Um, I was an English writing major and then I had a minor in women's studies, which was kind of went down the hill when I decided that I wanted to be an intern at Maxim Magazine. And I started doing all these writing projects, but I found myself at Maxim kind of like wandering into the photo department and being like, oh, what's that? What are you doing right there? How'd you make her hip just go in like that? And why is three quarters of Mariah Carey's inner thigh gone? How did that happen? And asking myself all these questions, I was so curious about the photo department at Maxim. So, you know, here I am, I'm working at the Mac counter and their time just is completely gone. And I'm at work, but I'm at work writing at Maxim, but I'm lingering around the photo department. So I'm finding all these areas of my life are all coming back to makeup. And um, as far as that goes, that just really taught me about passion. And my mom told me once, whatever you do, when you forget what time it is, that's when you know you're doing something that you truly love. And... For me, that's makeup because I could sit there and I can write a blog and I love writing. Don't get me wrong. That's another one of my true passions. I love reading and I love drawing. But makeup, there's something about getting a face in front of me. And at first, I like to talk to my clients because the difference between me and a regular artist is a regular artist, you're, the canvas doesn't sit in front of you like this and go, listen, um, the bottom half of the canvas I want you to not put so much attention on because I really like the top half of my canvas. And you know, basically when an artist paints, they have their painting in front of them and the painting isn't, their canvas isn't talking back to them the whole time. But my problem is, is my canvases sit down and they're like, listen, I want you to just only paint the left side and completely avoid the right side because my mother told me that brown eyeliner is too heavy, blah, 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 blah. So I'm trying to meet the criteria of making my canvas actually happy, making sure that my canvas feels comfortable with the paint on it. And then I'm also making sure that it's light responsive, that it's absorbing and deflecting the perfect balance of light and that um, I'm bringing that canvas to its absolute saturation of potential. And by doing that, you have to have that look, the makeup that you're putting on that person, because in my case it's brides a lot of the time, you have to have that makeup be a reflection of that person's character. So I am really into talking to my clients and understanding who they are and about them and about the relationship that they're kind of in because you know some girls wake up in the morning and their fiance is like you know sweetheart you look absolutely beautiful with no makeup on and that's what makes them feel beautiful is hearing that their fiance makes them feel beautiful so clearly I'm not going to do a wing out to here smoke cheek contour all that other stuff I have to 
I have to meet all of the criteria that I have to meet as an artist, plus I have to meet the criteria of what my canvas wants to be. And when that girl looks in the mirror and says to myself, oh my God, Alexa, I, I just, I can't believe it. It's me, but I just feel gorgeous. I never felt this beautiful in my life. I know I've done my job. So, you know, I could have had all this this entire career with writing and, you know, starting off as an editor and moving up and up and up. But there is something always, even at the Mac counter, about having a person look in the mirror and see themselves flawless that made me know that this is what I have to do with my life. Um, so as far as me, you know, I started at the Mac counter and then I started my business and that was about six years ago and I've been the Glam Fairy ever since. And um, I didn't know that there was a bridal makeup entire world out there. I didn't, re I didn't think that somebody would be able to devote their entire life to it. But you know, the Mac counter, it was great and I learned various things about artistry and techniques and you know runway but I also learned that I, I can't be confined and I kind of need to spread my wings and that's when I started the Glam Fairy full-time and I've been a full-time makeup artist um, you know for these past six years but I've a, a, as, a, as far as being an, an artist it's been my entire life now when you pick a makeup artist there are things you go for if you're looking for somebody who's going to you know show up in a blazer with khakis on and shut their mouth, I'd hit the back button if I were you because I'm a chatter and I love to talk and I love to understand my clients. I love to be able to really, you know, learn about people because that's why I love my job. And I think it's important whenever you're hiring any vendor for your wedding, for that matter, to make sure that they love what they do. And, and I absolutely love what I do. I love all the different things that being a makeup artist entails. Um, so, when you're picking a makeup artist, you know, there's 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 a lot of factors that you're looking for. And this is what I always explain to my clients. Um, if you go and you see a pair of Swarovski Encrusted 7 jeans and they're at Bloomingdale's and they are, you know, $250. And then you go onto Blue Fly and you're like, hold on a second. Is that the, is that the same pair? All right, is that the, right, they're the same pair, they're my size. And you're zooming, and the crystals are the same, and and they're fifty dollars. And oh my God, they're they're the same jeans. They're on sale for fifty dollars. Thumbs up. You have the same cut. You have the same jeans, and they're on sale. Great. Service and artistry is not the same way. So you can compare pricing for makeup artists, but you cannot compare the quality and and what's going on. Because as far as an artist goes, there is there's an entire arsenal of information in that artist's head and there's and there is a level of time like anything that they've dedicated to what they do so you know there are people who do a little bit of makeup side by side and then there are nutcases like me who are constantly researching and doing photo shoots and projects and reading and doing everything I can to expand myself as an artist and I love to help other artists and I have artists emailing me constantly um, and I just I just feel that you know, it's really important when you select a makeup artist to ask a lot of investigative questions. Like, you know, if I was a bride, which I don't think is ever going to happen since I've given up on everything with male genitalia, um, when I do decide to be, become if married, if I ever did, I don't, again, I don't think it's going to happen. That's just a big zero on the post-it. But, um, I would make sure that, you know, when you're looking for a makeup artist, you want to ask really important questions. Like, you know, Ha, I, I definitely want to see a portfolio. I definitely want to see Polaroids to see if your if your if your stuff is absorbing and deflecting the perfect balance of light on raw photo. Um, you know, you want to know where their training is at, and also you want to get a feel for the artist. You know, you really kind of want to understand who you're dealing with and, and and the background that they come from and the ranks of certification that they have, and you know. Can they do drag queen tech makeup? Can they do a natural look? You know, you really want to know what you're getting yourself into. Okay, so this is going to be the um, ending of the first part of my first webisode. I'm going to have a second part so it's in a shorter amount of time and doesn't annoy you. So I will see you um, for part two. Um, be sure to watch. Bye.